Now we can convert mixed floating point numbers to binary and back to decimal, but how do we handle negative numbers? Um, so there are three conventions for representing negative numbers in binary. Um, the first one is called sign and magnitude. The second is one's complement. And the third is two's complement. So if let's first talk about um, the sign and magnitude convention. So the way this works, um, sign and magnitude is um, we have, if we have a, suppose we have four bits um, of binary numbers. So the leftmost bit here, we call this the most significant bit, the MSB. And then the one farthest to the right, we call this the least significant bit. Okay, so for the sign and magnitude convention, um, this most significant bit here is reserved for the sign bit. And the rules for the sign bit are, um, if this sign bit is a zero, that means that this number will be positive. If the sign bit is a one, that means it will be negative. Okay, so then what about the rest of these bits? So if we have, suppose, four bits, then these three bits here will be used for the magnitude of the number. Okay, so, um, we, we can do this for any number of bits, but the important thing is, is we actually do have to specify how many bits we have. Because um, if, suppose, for example, if we had a negative, if we had a negative two in decimal, if we represented this in four bit sign and magnitude convention, this would be the most significant bit would be one because it's a negative number, and then two in binary is zero, one, zero, right? So this I'm gonna put is four bit sign and magnitude. But um, to represent negative two in, say for example, three bit sign and magnitude, this time the most significant bit would be in this position and the one zero would be the positions to the right of that. Okay, so this would be three bit sign and magnitude convention. So you see these results are different, therefore it is important that we, um, we designate how many bits we have before we actually do the conversion. Okay, so um, there is a drawback to the sign and magnitude convention for expressing negative numbers. Although it's simple to understand and it's simple to implement, because there's no real changing or converting that we need to do, all we need to do is just um, put a one here in the most significant bit position if it's a negative number. The problem is now that previously, if we had four bits at our disposal to express a number, now we only have three bits. Right, so let me write that more formally. Um, one drawback is um, if we have n bits to express a number in binary, we only have n minus one bits for the magnitude. So that means we need more bits to represent smaller numbers. So for example, if we had, um, if we had three bits at our disposal, the largest number that we could express with three bits would be um, seven in binary. But now, if we're using this sign convention, um, in order to express a, a number with magnitude seven, if it's signed, we are actually going to need an extra bit here. So zero if it's positive, 
and if it's negative, we would have a 1, 1, 1, 1. So you see what I mean where this is unsigned. In order to denote sign, we need an extra bit. So it requires more storage, which is why actually the sign and magnitude convention um, is not used as commonly as one and two's complement, which we'll talk about in the next video.